I'm Dave Armstrong with the Texas Rangers. It's Ranger Laura Simmons. Um, before we get started, uh, let me go ahead and read your Miranda rights, okay? You have the right to remain silent and not make any statement at all, and any statement you make may be used against you at your trial. You understand that? Any statement you make may be used as evidence against you in court. You understand that? You have the right to have a lawyer present to advise you prior to and during any question. You understand that? If you're unable to employ a lawyer, you have the right to have a lawyer appointed to advise you prior to and during any question. Do you understand that? Yes. And you have the right to terminate the interview at any time. Do you understand that? Okay. And you're, these are your attorneys here, right? Yes. Would everybody identify themselves for me for the record? John Snyder, S N I D E R. Robert Rogers. Hey, can I get your name and number? Amber Geiger. suspects that had been going through Ski, Fall Springs, Channel 7 to our channel. Um, it takes a while for them. They were all three stuck up in the attic. Um, we eventually get them all out and Martin and I, we transport our prisoner up to Jack Evans. Um, the other, Our other guys on the team transport them all up to Jack Evans to robbery unit. That's close to about 5, 5, 15 ish. So um, my partner at that point, like he has to, he has got to go and take care of some family stuff. And so it's me, Helen Gard, my our McPherson and Bruce were at headquarters. And once they like, for once robberies and everybody gets done, the gang has interviews the three suspects. We all take them down to Lou Starrett to go put them in. McPherson's the one who types the report and at that point, with the, after the interviews have lasted, the interviews lasted hours. So about maybe 7.30, we're at Lou Starrett. McPherson's typed a report for three different arrestees. So about 8-ish, we're done. Um, we go back to the station, unload our stuff, about 8.15 to 
20, I probably put my body camera up and I left, I went back to the back. We all filled out our overtime cards. I did my computer work and did my activity for the day. About that time it's 8.45. Um, so from there, I leave, drive my, drive my home 15 minutes. And I use my key fob, get in the garage, it's about, I'll say about 9, 10, 9, 15. And I, I go up, it's a circle garage. I go up, I'm 100% sure I parked on the third floor. I was like, so I was so lucky. It's like I got a front spot. Usually it's hard because I always carry my equipment. So I was like, I didn't have to walk a long ways. Because that hallway, I always walk down, it's so long. draw my gun thinking somebody's in my apartment that doesn't belong there. I'm the only one that lives there. No one does. And so when I open it, I pull, pull my gun. I still have my bags and everything. I pull my gun out and I see a dark body, like a silhouette, just standing in the very back. It's dark inside. I can't see anything. And so the, I say, let me see your hands. It, the person keeps moving around. I can't see where his hands are going. And so at that point, I feel like you're going to kill me. Obviously, you're in my apartment. I feel like you don't belong there, so you see me. You're going to be spooked and be like, shit, I got caught. And so I feel like you're going to kill me, and I know you're going to kill me. You're, And then at that point, he's moving, and he somehow ends up more towards the front of the cap, or like the front portion of the counter, I guess, kind of closer to from where he was. And to me, you're advancing. I don't know what the hell you're like. Freaking, probably gonna, you're going to kill me. And so I shoot two times. I then I walk in, and I'm still at gunpoint. I still have my gun out. And it's at that point when I get to the middle, I guess the counter top. I'm looking around. I'm like, okay, this is. I was like, it's not my home. I'm still. I still have my gun out. I walk up. I look at him. And I'm like, I holster up and I call 911. And I let them know I, I whenever I call 911, um, I, I know I first said I need EMS. And they're like, what happened? I was like, I need, I need police. I was like, pretty much I need everybody. Um, they asked me, what, uh, what apartment number are you in? I had a, I was on my knees trying to assist. I was trying to do CPR on him with one hand. I was on the phone with 911. So I walked back outside because I was like, fuck, I'm at 1478. I live at 1378. And so I couldn't even get my numbers, like the actual physical address. I've lived there less than two months. I just moved there. So, and then at that point, once um, the other officers arrive, I had, I hear them in the hallway trying to find me. So I step outside and the first officer I see, he rounds the corner on, I guess, on the east side of the building, whatever side they came on. And I told him he's in there. And I was like, I felt him know he's shot somewhere over in here. That's all I can remember. And then they took me away. So, what was your shift that day? I um, usually work from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. 8 a.m. to 4 p.m.? During that, I know two days, Monday, I can't tell you if it was Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. I've gotten overtime almost every single day this week. Okay. How many hours is overtime each day? Um, it varies. Okay. Last night was five and a half. The other Labor Day was four something. Because I, I was stuck at the hospital all night and I still had to go to jail and type the report. And I, there was another day, I can't remember what day it was. So if, if you were five and a half hours over time last night, then you probably got off around 9.30, would that be about right? 
I did my, I dropped my, whatever my time card, I can't even remember what my time card says. But you said you got home between 9 and 10, are you? Yeah, I did an 8.45, I believe, is when I did my time card. Okay, all right. And my sergeant has that. Okay. Do you remember when your last off day was? Uh, Saturday, because I worked an extra job on Sundays. So about six days ago? Yeah. Almost a week ago, okay. How many days had you worked prior to that, do you remember? Um, every day. I don't usually take off unless like, something's going on. Yeah. So do you remember when your last off day was before this past Saturday? Um, no. Like, like, my physical days off are Saturdays, Sundays, but yeah. Sundays I work at the church, so okay. technically I only have Saturdays and the only day off. Okay. Um, Who's your partner? Martin Rivera. Martin Rivera. And you said the unit that you're in. What unit is that? It's a crime reduction team. Tell me about that. Um, it's We work along with our deployment guys. Um, they're usually covert. Um, we go around, we usually deal with a lot of the drug complaints in the area. Um, uh, I guess wanted fugitives. So, like, for instance, this deal with robberies we've been trying to work with for the past freaking month. They've been usually going after Hispanic families. And mm -hmm. so, they got a ping, they finally got a ping on this house at 1709 L.C. Fay Hagens. And so, we've just been trying to stay in that area and just trying to find out who these guys are because there's more than eight. We only got five of them. So would you describe your unit as more of a proactive unit? It's more of we do our own work. We try mm -hmm. to we're, we actually try to create work and research. Like go to a dope house. Like try to go into our Tilo system and find out who the owner of that is connected. Okay. You have to generate for your own activity. It's not easy. It's do you guys respond to calls still? Yeah. Okay. Are you dispatched to calls, or you just respond to them if you're in the area? Um, we're just like if we want to go take it, we'll take it. But sometimes I'll just if it's the calls in there, I'll say, hey, I'm like right here in this call. I just put it in my box. I'll take care of it. Gotcha. So, okay. and if obviously if it's a a shooting call or a burglary, stabbing, definitely we try to go to it. Okay. What uh, what is your area of responsibility? Your beat, I guess. Um. Well, we kind of work all over southeast. Southeast of it. Yes. The, usually a lot of our complaints or the houses we're watching are just all, all throughout the area. Okay. Um, so when you, is, how many ways are there to get from where you park to your apartment? Or is there more than Routes, one? Routes? Yes. Um, to go home and to or like going like you park your car? I park my car, I go south on Lamar. No, 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 like, like you mean at yeah, home, once you park it in the garage? Oh. In the garage at home to go into your apartment from the parking garage. I always just go in that middle one, just because it's easier. Like, I always have my stuff that needs just a shorter route to go just straight down that hallway. Okay. Unless, like, get home late, and then, of course, you have to walk the heck around, but if you're home late, everybody's parked on the fifth floor. That's the top, so you know you're on the fifth floor. Mm -hmm. That's the only obvious. You know you're on the fifth or you're on the first. Are the only different floors that look different. Every floor looks the same. Okay. Or is there a sign parking or anything, or you just take you just park there? wherever. Okay. Where'd you park? I parked right in front of the door, kind of, because I was I was excited about getting a close spot. What do you drive? Uh, Dodge Ram 2014. What color? White. Is that four doors or? Two doors. Two doors. Okay. So you get home between 9, 10, and 9, 15. And you said you were carrying your gear with you. What is that? In my left hand, I carried, I had my heavy vest, my lunchbox, I don't know what lunchbox went, uh, my, and my duty bag. Okay. Um, I walked down the hall, carrying, take my left, put my key in, the door, I don't even have to turn it, 
like the door looks open, I hear somebody, I see a silhouette, it's far and back. I say, let me see your hand, let me see your hand. I don't, he doesn't do anything. Usually a typical person does this. Mm -hmm. They comply. And he, be, like, he did, he did start an aggressive, he started going, hey, hey. And to me, I'm, you're yelling at me, like, oh, you're about to, do, you're about to kill me. You're about to do something. What made you, what made you fearful? Uh, I understand that, you know, there's, if, this is in your, good. in my home, there's an intruder. Mm -hmm. You're not listening to me. You're moving around. You're in the back towards the window, and then you advance towards, like, the front near the counter. So, you're, I still can't see your hands. You're not listening to me. You're going to kill me. And their reaction is, you get caught. Oh, hell, I'm getting out. You're the one that's going to be, you're the one that's going to be out of, out of luck, I guess. Like, I would have been the one that would have died. And I thought he was going to kill me. I really did. Um, when you were walking down the hall to this door, did you hear anything? Did you see anybody? Mm -mm. There was no one. It was, it was quiet. Okay. When you were putting your key fob in, did you hear anything? When I put it in, it's like an odd, because I don't know how to explain the key. I'm sure y'all seen the key already, but like you, it's like an electric magnetic key. Mm -hmm. And it always, they're, my floor, everybody's, well, they all, everybody has problems with their keys. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes your light flashes red, so then you have to put it in. You have to put the key in all the time, take the key out, put it in again, and see if it works. And have, it you, have you ever discussed that problem with other neighbors? Um... No, I don't talk to anybody. Okay. I mean, the neighbor to my right, I'll see him sometimes on my patio. Nice guy, just so. But no, I don't talk to anybody. I go home, go to sleep, go to the gym. Have you yeah. ever gone to, I guess, their management there? And uh, let them know, hey, my key's jacked up or anything? I did once because my key fob, I couldn't get into my own gate. And okay. so they're like, oh, yeah, the, the strip or something's wrong with this. Like, okay. I just moved here and I can't get to my own residence, so right. that sucks. And is that the same key fob as what you used yesterday? Yes. Okay. And what was the remedy for that? So, what, how did they fix that? I guess they just like, whatever, how, I don't know how they do with their keychains or their key fobs. I don't know. They took it to the back. I, okay. I don't know. Okay. Who, who was that you spoke with when you went there? Mm, she was an older lady. Usually Sabrina's the only one down there. Okay. Do you know what's the last name? No. Okay. So you get to the front door. Where, when you first, when you open the door, um, did you visibly see that the door wasn't latched? I, I, I honestly just put it in. I didn't even, usually, I'm like, oh, it's, slightly ajar. You can tell it's open a little bit, it's slightly ajar. And so that's when I push in the key more, like, to the door opens a little bit, and I'm like, someone's in here. I hear them okay. moving around. And so I automatically draw my weapon. Okay. So the fob is actually part of the door, not part of the door frame, is that correct? The, where you insert the key fob? Yeah, you... That's in the door? That's in the door, Okay, yeah. not in the frame. Okay, so when you, and I'm, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, when you're putting it in, I guess at the same time the door's starting to move? Yes, that's okay. what I mean, like it's pushed up, like it, it's being pushed open. Gotcha. So, uh, did you hear anything at that point? That's when I, sit, I hear moving around. Okay. And I'm thinking, this guy, someone's going through my stuff, or I don't know what he's doing. And so I was fear, I was scared. I thought I was going to die. I, I don't know what else to hear. Can you describe what that movement sounded like? Like shuffling, like shuffling around, walking around. And when I open the door fully, there's someone standing in the very back, and I just see a silhouette. It's big, so that's, I, that's what I can get out. I couldn't tell you what the person was wearing. I couldn't. Okay. Um, and you said it was dark in there, is that correct? It was dark. Okay. I, the only, I turned on the lights whenever I walked back, I walked back up to the front because I can't see shit. Well, I can't see where he's hid. Okay. So that's when I turned on the lights and then went back over there, sat on my knees. I was on the phone with 911, and then I hear the officers coming, felt like forever, but I told them I'm over here. Okay. 
Um, how far did you get into the apartment before you was, gave verbal commands? I was at the doorway still. Okay. So Were you I in think, it or still outside? No, I was still, I, I guess the door frame, the... You can demonstrate however you need to. Um, I don't know what you want. Well, if, if, if I'm, if I'm the door frame, so, and then the apartment goes this way. Okay. So I'm literally like this, like still on the, um, the metal portion part okay. and I'm holding the door going through the door frame. I'm holding the door open mm -hmm. and I see a sh I see the shadow way back there. And that's when I draw and I'm not trying to point at you. Oh, you're very good. Don't you do So I draw. I said, let me see your hands, let me see your hands. He was way back there. He ended up towards the his, the more portion the armrest of the couch, closest okay. to the kitchen, and I shoot two times. I'm thinking because he's moving around so much, he's not listening. People, when they say, let me see your hands, they're going to stop what they're doing. They're not going to continue moving. So, in, in your experience, has that been the case usually? Uh, like Outside of this, when you've commanded somebody? To yeah, yeah somebody. They, they usually comply, or if they take off running, go mm -hmm. run after them. Okay. Was he walking towards you? He, he was in the back of, like, towards the patio door, okay. and he ended up more towards the front of the like, and that's I guess when all he was moving around and I was telling him I was like let me see your hands and he was not giving me his hands okay. and it's pitch black I don't I feel like you're gonna freaking pull something out and you're gonna kill me mm -hmm. um what else could how dark do you think it was there was a tv on I want to say maybe and that's it okay um, I knew where the light switches were because they mirrored the same light switches in my apartment. Okay. And I guess, is that how you were able to see the silhouette because of the ambient light from the TV? I must, yeah. Okay. That's the and does, does light come in through the patio door, too? I didn't see any of that. Okay. I just, there was that TV. Good. What, um, what is your, what is the pistol you got? Um, it's a 9 millimeter serial number. You use 646575. And what make a model of the handguns? Um, Smith, or what the hell are we? Six. Six, yeah, six R. Yeah. Nine millimeter. You know if it's a 226 or? It's a 226. 226, okay. And Amber, you haven't slept since mm -hmm. you got up at 530 the previous day. Yeah. How much sleep did you get the night before? Um, five something, because I usually go to bed around 12, and I worked overtime that night prior, so. What time did you get off that night? That would be the night of the 5th, is that right? I don't know. I, I can't remember. Okay. So you went to bed about midnight? Yeah. Got up at about 5? Yes, 5.30. 5.30, okay. Uh, what'd you do when you got up? Get ready. So you said earlier you normally take your dog for a walk, but did dog. you did you have your dog? No, I didn't time? have my dog. But I like my routine is to get up at five thirty. I don't, I don't even need to set an alarm on my phone. I just wake up. Okay. So you get up, you're ready for work. If you do shift, like you told me, yeah. Uh, and then you come home between nine ten nine fifteen. Um. When you shot, where were you standing? Still in the door. Still in the door. Same place where you Still just in the door. Okay. I didn't. I never. The only reason I advanced is when I saw. Okay. And do you know if you used a one-handed grip, two-handed grip? One-handed. One-handed. And why is that? Because I still had, I didn't even draw my stuff. I still had my stuff in my hand. Mm -hmm. So I guess it was helping, because those doors, they're heavy. And so it kind of was helping me hold the door open, too, at the same time. Okay. Which way does the door open? To the left. To the left. Okay. And is that the same as your apartment? Yes. Okay. Um, when you're facing him, and he's back towards, I guess, the patio. Door. Is he to your left as you're looking at him, or to your right as you're looking at him, or straight on? Straight on. Straight on. Yeah, okay. he's um, what did he say? Did he say anything? The, he said, "Hey, hey, hey!" Aggressively. Mm -hmm. And that's all. That's all he said. And I said, "Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands." Okay. Um, do you have a weapon light on your pistol? No. Okay. Um, When um, when you open the door, uh, you told me what you saw, what you've what you heard. 
And what you did, did you smell anything when you were there? I don't remember. I smelled the gunpowder. Okay. So, the halls smell like weed. The guy across the way from me smokes a lot of weed. Okay. And did this particular hallway smell like weed? Yeah, they, they always smell like weed. It's nothing new. Okay. Everybody knows that. Okay. Um, so after you shoot, you said twice? Yes. Okay. Uh, you holstered up and walk me through that from there. After I shoot, I'm still, I still have my gun out. I walk, um, midway to the countertop island and I see he's down. So I get on my knees and holster up, calling 911, trying to do compressions and stay on the phone with 911. I'm telling him, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. I'm like, hey, bud, stay with me. I told us. But I get to the fridge. I thought it was my apartment. I thought it was my apartment. It was my apartment. And I told him, and I, I couldn't tell the operator. I didn't know what apartment number. I had to walk outside. And I walked back in. Have you ever been through an incident before, either on duty or off duty, where you felt like your life was in danger? Yeah. Okay. Can you describe one of those instances or however many you feel free to? Uh, on duty? I get, uh, uh, we work in Pleasant Grove. Um, involved in the deal where a guy took my taser, got into a fight with him, 
Can you can you detail that for me a little bit? Yeah, um, bake or uh, one of our deployment guys, Bacon, said that there was a wanted individual, a felony warrant. Um, get behind, get behind the car. Long story short, there's three people in there. The guy in the back seat is the one that he ends up having uh, Mandel. He's he's selling out the car. We're not there for him. We're there for the female. We never got a chance to identify her because he started moving around in the back seat with this box. So I asked him, I was like, hey, you're reaching for us. No, it's not cool on the traffic stuff. So, or on the mark that we were at. So my partner gets him out, he pats him down. As soon as he starts patting down, he just starts reaching to his pocket again. And so I was like, I guess I've got two people. Okay, so we get into a scuffle with him. He's Your reaction to him reaching into his pocket he's to try and go hands on. Yeah, we're sh we're just doing a pat down at this point now because now we our level of fear has gone up. You have something on you. You're you're making me uncomfortable. You're obviously up to something. I mean, his body language, him not complying with Martin's commands. So he, once he, he starts pulling away from Martin, I notice that I go over there and fight. That fight was on and. I told him, I was like, I'm pulling out my taser, I'm tasing him, and I, he takes my taser because we're up close fighting, and he, we get up on the ground, taser is in his hands, and I shoot him. Hmm. You have the intentions of hurting me, my partner. You're not going to take our weapons. When you say Mandel, are you talking about oh, manufacturing? Oh, yeah, sorry. No, no, no problem. Um, describe that suspect for me. Uh, he was a Hispanic male. Um, he had, I don't know what he was wearing that day. Um, heavy set, tall. He had a big belly. Um, that's I don't know, that's all I can say about him. I mean, in his 30s, late 30s. Is that the only confrontation you've, <coughs> physical confrontation you've been in? Um, or have you been in a lot over the I've years? been over years. I cannot tell you like one like verbatim each one. Okay. Um, what was the outcome of that uh, confrontation? Did that guy live? Yeah, he lived. Okay. Um, do you know where he is right now? I think he's um, in prison okay. for two more years. Um, your work with deployment and squad, have you ever had any kind of threats? Uh, placed against you because of your your work as a police officer. I mean, yeah, they threaten us all the time. Okay. Um, um, I've had a guy on a, um, I went to a family violence call and apparently this guy had spyware on his girlfriend's phone and he could hear everything I was saying and he goes, tell that little white bitch I can see her because I got a target on her head, I'm watching her and he described, he, he was reading my car like everything we were doing, our body movements. So he was watching us somewhere. And she goes, He's, he does this to me. He goes, he, it's creepy as hell. Mm -hmm. And I documented that. I called intelligence on what the guy said because he was sending these text messages saying, she, um, she tell her she better look out her head's the perfect size for a bullet. And I was like, okay. So, I mean, it's, And how long ago was that? Uh, maybe Five, six months ago, less than that. Okay. You know, I did a bulletin on it. I called. Um, um, did you ever hear of an outcome from that mm -hmm. bulletin or any investigation or anything? No, the, actually the girlfriend, she, called, she kept calling the station because um, the, only, the only offense I had out there was like a Class C. So I wrote him a citation for Class C. He wasn't there. so. He was moving, so I put his new address on there where they were supposedly moving to. Mm -hmm. She calls back a few months later. She goes, hey, tell that officer she needs to dismiss that ticket. And I was like, I, I can't. I was like, I have all this proof that this guy's violent, and he's going to make more attentions to you. If you're fearing and you're calling 911, she called 911 that day multiple times. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, we have to take care of it. So. When you say you have all that proof that he's violent, describe that. Uh, his prior arrest, like he had a violence prior arrest. Um, 
and just this tendencies towards her and the females felt fearful of her life. Mm -hmm. She already had her tires slashed that day, so. Um, did you ever see him? No. Did you ever know any kind of physical description on him? Yes, because I um, pulled him up in our, um, I guess our place where we pull up prior arrests and stuff. Do you recall what it, his description was? Uh, he was a black male in about 30s, maybe. Do you remember his size? Um, bigger guy. Okay. Um, what other incidents can you think of similar to something like that? Mm. Ones or I, I don't yeah, physical confrontations or ones where you felt threatened or you were threatened like this last guy you just talked about? Uh, I can't think of any of I can't Those are the two that stand out to you though? Yeah, I can't think of any off the top of my head. I mean, I've been punched on the call before. What was that? Mm, that was about three years ago. I go to a call. Um, it's at Creekside Villa's apartments and it's right down the station. So I was nearby as a family violence call. Guy driving around shooting a gun in the air and his, I can't remember what kind of car it was, Caprice, I don't know. Um, I'm waiting for my cover because like, it's a the guy shooting and apparently these two or a couple they're fighting. Mm -hmm. So as I'm waiting for my cover, I get, from a distance you can see like people going a group of these people going into like the this parking lot area. And I'm like, oh, crap, this is part of it. And I see this guy with a bat walking over to them, and I'm like, I, I have to do something. For you. you you have to prevent somebody from getting hurt, and so. Female is beating up the male. Um, my co I, eventually my cover gets there, but I pull her off, and as soon as I do that, he slugs at me. Because he's like, he goes, basically, don't touch her or whatever. I'm like, and there was a pistol laying in the floorboard of that car. So. Did he threaten you at all or anything like that? And he just punched me because okay. he was pissed off at me. What was the outcome of that? Um, I don't know. I don't know happened. Going back to yesterday, did anything out of the ordinary happen during your shift or when you got up or on your way home or anything? No. It's just a normal day. <coughs> got overtime. The normal day where you, like, for you, might not be a normal day for normal people, but a normal day for you is working overtime and arresting aggravated robbery suspects who are hiding in an attic and that's a normal day for That's, you. We, we work around that type of stuff. We all know how each other work. We are very close. We've all worked together for two years, so. Um, you take any medication for anything? No. Okay. Um, how were you feeling health-wise yesterday? Good. I wanted to go to the gym after I got off. I was supposed to be off today. Is that something you usually do after your shift? Yeah, I always go home when, I, when my dog go walk him. About six o'clock, go to the gym. And why do you do that? What, what's your purpose for the gym? I love the gym. I like being in the love trying to stay fit. So it makes me happy. Okay. Do you do anything to release stress? Um, gym is stress. I go with my family all the time. Okay. So friends, I, mean, I don't have like, I don't go horseback riding or anything like that, but okay. gym makes me happy. I love going to the gym, running. Yeah. Do some CrossFit here and there. So. What were your plans when you got home last night? I wanted to go to the gym. Okay. okay. When you got home, but once you had to work overtime. I still wanted to go to the gym. Okay. Just to de-stress, get the help done. It's just a habit, like getting off. And I was like, I don't have to wake up early, so I can actually not have a rush workout. Mm -hmm. What was, were you supposed to work today? Yes. I, well, no, I took my holiday today from Labor Day because I worked Labor Day. Okay. So you're just going to relax or do whatever today? Okay. Um, 
What was your mood when you when you got there? When you got out of your truck, was walking up to your tired. I mean, but I still push myself to go work out. Okay. It's exhausted. Um. Okay. You know, and you think anybody would be tired after getting rained on and then going home, like going through the whole process of headquarters and going on the stairhead. And when you say go through that whole process, tell me about that. What do you mean? Well, like going up, like when they get interviewed, that could take hours, and so then you're just like, oh, well, how much longer is this going to take? But you're used to that. I mean, that's the process. Mm -hmm. So you go type the report. That's the process. We got to wait for it to get approved. It gets approved. You have to go to the jail sergeant. You got to take the loose stair from here. But, yes. And you got to get the go through the booking process okay. with each prisoner. Yes. And I we did that yesterday. How was your <laughs> Tell me about the prisoners you took in. Kind of walk me through, um, I guess, that call for service up to the time you booked them in. Can you describe that for me? Uh, the robbery suspects? Yes. The, um, 1709 L.C. Fay Hagens. They, I believe, I think robbery's got a ping on the phone there from the, is it Corian's phone? So there's no running, they, well, eventually we find out there's no running water in this place, so. But, um, they, they know there's one suspect that they've been looking for. They weren't expecting to find two others that have been involved in all these robberies. Um, they do a call out. What the call out is basically over the, at the PA. You call them out. So they all came out one by one. So that took a little longer than usual. But instead of like doing a pry or a, like slam or something, mm -hmm. so one like one by one they trickle out. We get the guy about an hour or so later. They gassed out that house. Um, they recovered, two, I want to say, two guns underneath the house, multiple guns in the attic where they were at. Um, I don't recall them saying anything about inside the house. So they took all of I me, mean, obviously, they took the guns, processed them, and take our guys, go to headquarters. So. About what time of day was that? Let's see, it was about one one ish. We get assigned it. Between two and four, we're out there probably, okay. something like that. Um, do you remember what time you guys cleared the scene, or finally got them in custody? No. Okay. You said that uh, I guess SWAT gassed out the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know what gas they used? No. Okay. Um, have you been exposed to gas before, CS gas or OC or anything? Yes. Okay. What 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 were the effects that? Of OC. Was? Either. Uh, OC burned. Okay. It hurt. Did it affect your eyesight? Uh, yeah. Okay. How so? Um, just, I mean, pepper spray up in your face, yeah. Okay. So we weren't anywhere near the house. We were perimeter out in the street. Okay. So we are direct, I'm trying to direct traffic away from the house so no one gets into crossfire. There's no civilians trying to go up to the house. Okay. Um, did you don a gas mask when they gassed the house? I was nowhere close to getting it. Nowhere close to it. Yeah. Okay. So you weren't contaminated with it at all? Or? No, no it was fine. Um, did you feel like you were affected by it at all, physically? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you store any weapons in your apartment? Um, Other than I, your issue pistol? Well, I have my well, my rifle. I keep at work just because I don't, for the reason, I scare people to break into my apartments, but I, that stays in my locker at work. Okay. Uh, but no other weapons there? No. Okay. Describe. Describe your apartment for me, like your kitchen. Um, it's starting from, I guess, right. There's a steel fridge. From there, it's granite countertops, like speckled with dark cherry wood. Dark cherry wood with silver handles. I have a coffee maker. I guess food and stuff laying here and there. Um, stuff on the front counter. And the sink. So the others to the right. I mean, do you want to know? Whatever, as much as you can. Um, as much as you can recall. There's, I mean, I don't know this I don't know how it is. Like, stuff on my countertop, I don't know. But, I mean, there's still the layout of the kitchen is median, it's a low top median sink. It goes turn into angle, a little more countertop, oven, a little more countertop, angles again, 
He goes to the fridge, which is nearest to the door. There's a wall that separates that. Okay. Can you describe um, the guy you encountered? Can you describe his apartment? It's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. same thing. Same mm -hmm. layout. The, um, lights, the lights are in the same place. The whole thing is the exact same layout. Okay. Is there... Are your floors the same? Okay. The countertops are the same, you said? Um, okay. Uh, let's see what else. Tell me about your dog. Ranger. He was born on November 14th of last year. Uh, he's a New Yorkie. Uh, listen. Where, where was he yesterday? He was at my mom's because uh, they were doing a moisture inspection and I didn't want him running out. Okay. Um, from, the fourth, from the 4th until the 7th they were doing inspections, but you don't know when they're going to come into your apartment. Okay. Uh, did you expect him to be there from the time fourth. I, from the 4th to the 7th, I, didn't, I don't know when they're coming. So, you know, they don't email you saying, hey, this person's coming to your apartment this day. Okay. I, no, I don't even know if they ever came in, so. Okay. Um, when you get home and your dog is there, when Ranger's there, does he make noise at all? Does he bark? Or? No, he's just quiet. Quiet. Where, where do you keep him? He runs just like in the kitchen area. Like, whenever I come home, I never let him in my bed when I'm at home. Okay. But he runs around when you're not at home? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't, I'm not at home, so I don't know. No, but you don't, keep, you don't keep him in a kennel. No, he just he sits on the couch with me. Okay. So when I'm in bed, he follows me everywhere. Okay. But when you leave, like, for work, do you put him in a kennel or no, he's, in the bathroom? Whenever I get home, he's sleeping on the couch. Okay, gotcha. So he doesn't. He's a lazy guy. Okay. Or he'll sleep in my bedroom or, like, my, I guess, my, the bathroom that leads to my bedroom. Mm -hmm. There's a big area right, I guess, all my clothing, the type of clothing on the bathroom floor area. He'll sleep on that. Okay. Um, at what point did you realize that wasn't your apartment? When I got midway to the that median that's in the kitchen, I guess. Um, how would I so you fired two rounds. Fired two rounds at the doorway. You were I approaching. I up to the clo that median that pokes it out. And I'm looking, I'm like, it's like, that's not, I was like, that's, that is not, um, my, I was like, that's not my couch. I was like, that's not my TV. And I know I still got to take, I've got to take care of this guy. I still, still got to render aid to him. Mm -hmm. so. so it wasn't until you got even with the kitchen counter. The, the one that kept the counter that separates the kitchen from the oh, living room. Um, could you see any light from anywhere else before you turned on the lights? Besides the TV? No. Okay. Um, how did you feel after, I guess, the scene settled a little bit? Describe that for me. I was confused. I don't know. My head went that that was my apartment. Describe that for me. Like, you say confused. I just, I was like, I guess the feeling of like, is this really ha like happening to me? Like, is this happening? Like, I wasn't expecting to go home. I wasn't expecting that outcome. I mean, I know I can't change it. I can't. And I guess by confused, I just mean I. I don't know how to, I didn't know how to feel, and I guess my reaction was like, <laughs> just try to stay calm for the moment, because I didn't want people out there, just like, oh, everyone's freaking out. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to keep myself calm, and not trying to worry myself. Do you feel like there's anything you could have done differently to identify that that was your apartment or it wasn't? Before you got into No, because I'm comfortable going home. Like, I'm, I do it, come home. Okay. So, is it fair to say that's it's just a routine that you're in? Yeah, it's like brushing your teeth. You wake up, brush your teeth, go to the bathroom. So, 
which is routine, I guess. Are you a routine person? Yeah, you know, 5.30, pretty on the spot. I do my laundry every Wednesday, wash my uniforms. Sundays, it's every night I take out the trash because the trash man comes between 8 and 9, so I just have to make sure that's out. Where'd you learn that from? Where'd you learn that, I guess? Structure? Yes. I uh, was through, like, my sister. She could kind of be, like, late to everything, and I never I hate being late. So I guess my mom and like, they would prop me up to be on time. And it's just how I was brought up, I guess. Okay. Were you in the military? No. Okay. Uh, college? Uh, yes, I okay. went to school. Tell me about that. I uh, went to, I haven't finished, I'm really cl close to finishing, but I um, went to TCC and then went to UTA. And so once I found out I got into the academy at some point. How long have you been with DTA? Uh, I ran dates in November 6, 2013. So a little below five years? Okay. Going on five years. Um, if there's anything you could change about this, what would it be? I can't change it. It was still in my apartment. I still felt like that guy was going to kill me. I wish he was alive. 